Hey everyone, Josh here. So today we're doing the fuel filter on the CJAA TDI, along with a lot of other stuff here. I thought I would just make a quick video on changing it. So depending on who you ask, these common rail TDIs with a CP4 high pressure pump, you need to make sure you get all of the air out of the filter housing when you change it, because they like to fail. So there's two different ways you can do it. One includes using a scan tool such as VCDS, the other way is going to use a jumper cable. So if you're doing a lot of work on these cars, VCDS is really, really handy to have. There's other scan tools as well that work quite well with Volkswagens, but not everybody can afford that or doesn't want to pay out of pocket. I thought I'd just include both options here. A lot of cars, you can just turn the key on or sometimes it's open the door and the fuel pump's gonna prime quickly before you start it. These cars are not the case, so you can't just pop a filter in and then turn the key because that's not actually going to prime it. So we're going to kind of prove that theory here and then we're going to change the filter and then show the two different ways. Okay, so just doing a little bit of a layout of what all these fuel lines go to. We've got two lines that would come from behind the coolant ball here. This one here is your low pressure. It comes from the fuel pump in the tank. This line that I have off also goes back there and this would be your return to the tank. This line right here, the third one, that goes to your intermediate or medium pressure fuel pump, which then has a line that comes off here and goes to the high pressure pump. And then any leak off from the high pressure pump or underneath my laptop, there's a T here from the injectors that gets fed back into the pump as well, so or back into the filter. So this is a bit of a warm-up circuit. Um, if you live in a colder climate, the fuel coming from the injectors in the pump will be nice and warm, so that should prevent fuel from gelling in the filter housing. So that's what all these lines do. So the way we're going to prove that just cycling key doesn't work, we got the return line should be going to the tank. We got it off. And if I turn this key on, hypothetically, if the pump would run, you should have fuel spitting out of here which it's not, so we're just gonna prove that here now. Okay, so that's door open, so you can hear no fuel pump turning on. You can hear some clicking, but the fuel pump's still not kicking on. So you can cycle as many times as you want. There's gonna be no fuel that comes out of there. So that's not going to work. Okay, so I'm actually gonna change the filter here now because that's kind of the whole point of this video. So there's two different styles of fuel filters on these cars and they don't interchange. So you need to make sure that you get the right one. Uh, one, I believe it has kind of cutouts around every bolt. And the other style is like this. So mine's this style. So ID Parts has a nice kind of breakdown of what filter housing looks like and what filter you need. I believe this is the later style. Um, maybe I'll put a picture so you can figure out what kind of filter you need, but that's that. So it's just a matter you pop these five bolts or six bolts, depending on the style, I think. This whole top will come off. And then I like to empty the filter housing out. Any metal or particulate or even water will be in the bottom. You pop the new filter in, and then depending on the car, I like to put liquid moly diesel purge to fill the housing up and then fill the rest up with diesel. That's just kind of personal preference, but you can do whatever you want to do. So I'm going to get this filter changed off camera because there's not really anything too interesting, and then we'll get back to priming. Okay, so filters changed, new o-ring on the head. Uh, there's a little bit of rust in there, but nothing too aggressive. So it's a good time to mention that Coolant lines and your nice new timing belt and your nice new serpentine belt aren't huge fans of diesel, so make sure you kind of not spill much if possible. But anyway, so now we're going to get to priming the system with jumper cables. So we're going to go to our auxiliary pump. It's got this main connector back here, just a regular old connector. Brown's ground, black is power. So the back one is ground, front pin is power. Okay, so if you're doing this, you just leave this line on. That way any of the air can go back to the tank. 
I'm just gonna put this into a canister just to kind of prove that it actually does pump. So. It's gonna take a little bit to fill up this canister because it's right dry. Okay, so that did not work. So it pulled a little bit of fuel into the filter housing. Like the filter's wet, but not enough uh, to actually pump. So I think once it got a bunch of air into that pump, it just started, uh, it lost its prime and then it wouldn't pump anymore. So ideally you should be jumping the one in the tank underneath the back passenger seat and this one. But I'm thinking if we get a little bit of fuel or diesel purge in there, I'm thinking we should be able to make do with what we have to save popping the seat up and getting that cover off and all that stuff. So I'm going to throw a little bit of diesel in here, uh, probably just to the top of the filter. So then we still have all this empty space up top that we need to get the air purged out of. But I'm hoping that should get the, uh, the pump happy. Okay, so we got to fill to the, just the top of the filter here now, so we're going to give it another try. There we go. So it took a little bit, but you can probably just jump it for a couple minutes with that loop hose and then that way you know for sure everything's all flushed out. So that's the easy slash hard way to do it without the scan tool. So now we'll do it with VCDS. So we'll pop that out of here and plug this back in. Here we are, so we got key on, we're at the engine control unit. We're gonna go to output tests. We do a drop down, so you can do the fuel pump relay control circuit. So that's gonna run the one in the tank. So it's gonna keep cycling it. So you can do that for a little bit. So if you want, you can also run the auxiliary fuel pump as well. Um, but if you have the scan tool, I think just running the fuel pump circuit should get that filter housing full. I probably wouldn't bother running the auxiliary fuel pump unless you had the lines off going to the pump itself, which I did with the timing belt, but I've already bled all that out. Just jumping it right at the pump. so. I think we should be good here now. I'm going to put the return line back on how it's supposed to be. And I should be good to start up and uh, make sure the timing belt goes around right. 